All right. Uh, first hand is zone poker. It's a fast fold game. I'm only doing this to show you that I often go back and check these charts on uh, red chip poker right now as I try to drill these into my head over and over and over again. This isn't meant to be a live stream. Yeah, see, fold. Uh, and then, a, whoosh, it'll take me off to another table. Turn the volume down a little bit. Uh, this one I'll probably defend. Ace-8 offsuit. Well, not against an under-the-gun raise. Under-the-gun is typically a very, very tighter raise. If I wanted to, I could squeeze here, but I'm not going to. This hand isn't good enough. This hand is marginal. If I squeeze and they call, I'm screwed. Uh, if I get folds, that'd be great. But if I get called, I don't know where I am in the hand. That's a fold. You're going to notice that I pay close attention to the position on the button and early in the position early. I'm focused on a very, very tight range because I'm out of position for most of the hand. Late, I may open up and take some shots if I feel like I can steal blinds. The problem with zone poker is, and on ignition is I get no reads. I, I mean, they zip off from one table to the next. I can sometimes track huge stack sizes, like a $20 guy. I can usually kind of try to build a little bit of a read on him, but not generally. Uh, you're just playing pretty much straight up here. Which means really even playing weaker stuff like 5-7 suited, 3-4 suited, baby pocket pairs don't mean anything. This is an easy call. In fact, I could re-raise it here being that I will be in position the rest of the hand. But I'd rather hopefully trap him there to good open or I will raise this flop. I have basically 8 outs and an over card to the ace. And if he's just c-betting that, I'm going to just crush him with a raise right now. If he wants to continue, let him. I mean, his range there is junk. That wasn't the best card for me, actually. But... He didn't continue. He didn't have much either. That's a fold. I start half stacked. Um, it plays a little bit more like my live passive games. This is a very, very, very borderline. If it folds around to me, it's a very borderline blind steal situation in a game like zone poker where it is anonymous and a little bit more straightforward. It's probably a little bit too weak to open, so I'll typically fold it. I mean, it has potential, but what? What kind of potential? This. If it's suited, I might defend my blinds. Being that it's not suited, it's junk. So I would recommend really that you go to this position here. You're focusing a lot on this chart here, and you're focusing a lot on these charts here. And you're trying to, uh, see, I could steal with any two cards here. He's probably gone, but this is just a little bit too weak for me to try it with. Because if he does call it, I'm just screwed. I'm out of position, totally screwed. Now this is a good one here. If one of these guys opens, I can three bet it. Instead, I'll just pick the blinds. If one of these two guys had opened it from early position, I probably would just flat it and take, now see, over card, back door, flush, card, flush draw, and an open-ended straight draw, easy bet. And I'm going to go ahead. I don't mind if the hand ends right now either, so a standard two-thirds pot size bet. He'll probably call it because he doesn't believe, well, he would call it with a lot because he doesn't believe that I have crap either when I really do. Those are always fun when you hit those and you get action from some, like, pocket tens or some kind of an over pair. See, under the gun raise, ace two is dominated, so out we go. This isn't necessarily what we wanted to see. I open under the gun with 9-10 suited. I get three bet immediately. This is a big hand, but this is an implied odds type of hand. I've got an implied odds hand to take his stack if I hit it. I'm getting, that's a weak, 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 barely more than a min raise of a three bet. I'll call it with the odds to draw. Hope to hit something. Don't really hit it. This is a plan to check fold. No need to get crazy. I've got a gut shot, backdoor draw, but it's just not strong enough for me to check raise this hand, so I'll just check and fold it. I play this again, this half stack to start, because it allows me to do some things. In technical terms, you should be playing very much power poker, top pair, top kicker, kings, aces, queens type hands. Not the 9-10 suited implied odds type of stuff, but I can usually keep the pot size of the, of the you know, keep the pots pretty small. Um, and whatever so I play that to practice my ranges because this isn't really I don't care about this money in this account I'm using it to practice my ranges so that when I go back to the live boats this is a good squeeze spot when you get an open and a call this guy's generally really really weak if you raise big you can get this guy to fold this guy folds this guy often folds right behind him you can do it almost with any two cards but generally speaking you do want to have something in case you get called the squeeze is a very popular move here. King 8 offsuit is just wide enough. I will go check, not to a raise though. But let's go check from the dealer position. It folds to me. King 8 is right on the edge of King 9, King 8 offsuit. Technically, it's a fold. But like I said, it's right on the edge of what you might want to open if you're feeling frisky. That's a fold. 
we get a lot of hands in and we get a lot of chances for some jack five suited from the cutoff is not strong enough see really not playing anything other than about jack nine suited from the cutoff why this just doesn't have enough potential flops top pair with a horrible kicker and a pretty weak flush draw at that and you still got to get through that button to pick up the blinds oh you're better off in this game making your decisions easy staying in good solid spots getting value out of weaker players and just letting the game come to you we're getting to the point where here i'm down to about two bucks i'll probably go and damn of course i'll probably top up here in a hand or two under the gun i'm very dominated um we'll try and three bet it here if i'm in position i usually go to about three three and a half times the opening size I'm out of position I'm going to four to four and a half times the opening size and that sucks now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and buy in for my what is that nearly a dollar my 95 cents or so I'll top up my stack I'll fold then it'll come back to 250 and I start over at my half stack that was brutal sometimes if you use like pocket kings or something like that and I three bet he goes screw you he four bets because he got aces or kings now, I can't play that with ace eight suited I gotta get the hell out of there this, if it was suited, I would defend. Turns out I get the walk anyway. I mean, sometimes there's just not a lot going on. You know, you just got to finagle your way around. Wait for the game to come to you. This is the hard part about being relatively card dead. This is just a blind steal. If they play back at me, I'm probably ahead of their range. They three bet me. I don't know. It's not usually something I'm going to defend to a three bet here. Because again, I tend to give these guys a lot of credit at this level. I don't need to have a lot of skill at this level to beat this game. It's easier just to stay pretty. And this is very, very wide to a raise. That's a no. Very, very wide, meaning it's a very, very bottom end of my range. It's, it's quite a reach to play 6-9 suited. That's obviously a 3-bet hand. If anybody raises from any position, even here, boom, I'm going to 3-bet him. I'm going to go to 60 cents. Hope to get a fold, maybe even 65 cents. I'll take that dead money all day long. If he comes in for 15, which he just did, now I'm going to add to 65 and go to 90. I want that fold equity. I don't necessarily, I don't mind drawing, taking a flop with this hand. I don't really want to though. I'd rather just push a big old raise in there, take the 30 cents, move on. No flop, no loss, easy money. But don't get out of, out of out of sorts because you start doing it with shit like 310 offsuit and you're going to get called a lot. You're going to run into hands on occasion. And the more often you're making those moves, the more often you're going to run into hands. And the more often you're doing it with junkie cards, the more often you're going to actually lose money. So you want to kind of keep a move like that close to your vest and at least make sure that when you do get called or played back at, you do have some. If I'd been four bet shove there with ace king, I'd probably go ahead and call it off. I'm flipping against king, queens, jacks. I've got an overcard against kings. I just really don't. I can see another ace king and chop the pot. I really don't want to see aces there. It's really the only hand I'm afraid of. And if you wake up against them, well, them's the breaks. What are we at? Eight, nine minutes here? We'll go another two minutes or so. Easy steal. But that's a lot of what this game is until you happen to hook somebody and get, a, and get doubled up through them. Five, six is too weak. But what you need to see is how I'm just I'm staying within my range. Jack 10 offsuit on the button is a raise. It's not call a raise. It is open for a raise if I get folded to. See, can't call that. I could three bet it as a bluff, but you could have ace jack, queen jack, you know, ace 10, queen 10, king 10, stuff like that that just totally dominates me. And that's just not a good hand to call those bets with. Three betting and then he calls me and I'm really kind of screwed. Ace queen, easy. I open for a 4x under the gun, and in this position here, 3x in the later positions. And I don't mind getting called with these hands. I'm playing such a tight range here, I don't mind getting called. This is multi-ways great. I'm suited. And there's the ace. Really simple. Let's go ahead and bet it for value, about half a pot. Call it good. I mean, if you got ace 4 or ace 6, good for you. You might. Ace 6. Now it's a kicker battle, most likely. This is, so we'll go ahead and we'll down bet it a little bit. Half the pot. He'll call it. Or he'll shove over me. Or he'll full hell, I don't know. I could have had pocket queens there. Who knows? But there was my two pair that would have counterfeited his ace jack with sixes. And it's just grinding up a just through steady solid poker. That's all this is. 
you, what, what do you have, about four hands, five hands here in 10 minutes? This is too weak on the butt. It's, it's not bad, but it gets you into more trouble than it's worth at, at a game like this where anonymous people don't have any reason to really be bluffing unless they're just bat crap crazy. This I would love to open, but I'm not going to just because there's no reason for people to be too frisky or too goofy. I'll just keep my range nice and tight up front. I would open jack nine on the button or in the cutoff all day long, but not from under the gun. First to act, whatever you want to call it. Six twos, too weak from that spot. Just get good at memorizing what position you're in in relation to the blinds and the button and what cards you have. And is it good enough to open when you get all of the information passed to you? See, now if he opens, I'll probably call it. If it folds to me, I'll just pick the blinds with a 3x raise. If they play back at me, they play back at me. You guys, this doesn't have to be a hard game. You know, you're not going to double up all the time. You shouldn't be always looking for double ups and big money and all that crap. This is about a grind. This is a defend situation. Hopefully we get into something where we can defend. As long as this guy doesn't open, there we go. If he steals it, I'll, I'll gladly call him. Nope. I want to get into one of those situations where I can walk you through an out of position hand, but maybe we'll do that at a different date. Ace nine cutoff is definitely an open. It's going to suck if he calls. Anyone three bets, it's a fold. There's your fold. See ya. These decisions are all fairly mechanical until we get into a spot that really requires a lot of thinking. We'll do about one more. Go ahead and sit out the next hand, make this the last one. Raise again. Same situation. If you three bets me, I probably fold. Damn. God, can I predict it or what? Sometimes it's just the way the cards are running. He might have six, seven suited, but I'm not going to find out because by the time we get into a war and we find out, I find out he has ace jack or ace king or something like that, I'm totally screwed with ace ten. Not worth the risk. Fold, live to fight another day. Practice your discipline. Get good at this game. Grind up a roll. I mean, we bought in for... $2.50, we're up a dollar minus, what, the 50, 60 cents that we had, so in, what, a half hour or whatever, yeah, it was only like a 40 or 50 cent profit, big freaking deal, but the more you do this, this is just like daily fantasy sports, just like everything else, get good at breaking even, breaking even, breaking even, mitigate your losses all the time, and then you can live indefinitely until you wait for the luck to swing your way and print money, that's all this is, no different than any other game we play, all right, guys, peace out, talk, talk to you soon.